Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, and welcome to the first televised debate of the 2019 Nashville mayoral election. Before we begin, we want to go over some of tonight's rules. All four candidates will be given the chance to answer each question. They will have one minute to respond. In the interest of time and fairness, the audience has been instructed to remain quiet, except for right now when we welcome the candidates. We begin with State Representative John Ray Clemens. Next is retired Vanderbilt professor, Dr. Carol Swain. Next at large, Metro Councilman, John Cooper. And Nashville Mayor, David Briley. Candidates, welcome. We're glad to see you here, and we'll begin with this. A recent Vanderbilt poll found 45% of people think Nashville is moving in the wrong direction. That is a 23% higher than just four years ago. So the question is, do you think Nashville is moving in the right direction, and what's one thing the next mayor must focus on to keep the city moving forward? We'll begin with you, Mayor Briley. Well, thank you uh, for having me tonight. Thanks to the city of Nashville. Thanks to Belmont University, the Tennessean, Channel 5 for hosting this debate. Uh, I believe fundamentally Nashville is going in the right direction. And that's based on talking to a lot of people, not just here in Nashville, but around the country. That's why it's so uh, heavily uh, recruited uh, as a place for, for businesses to come. Uh, but that doesn't mean we don't need to change. And uh, in fact, uh, as mayor for the last 15 months, I've focused on the things we do need to change. I started with a budget that uh, Councilman Cooper had sponsored. That budget had spent all of our reserves as legally allowed, had made promises on pay raises, and set the tax rate at the wrong level. I had to work through that. I got us through a budget cycle without raising taxes. In fact, two budget cycles without raising taxes. I got pay raises to our employees this year. Yes, we're going in a good direction. There are things we need to focus on. There's change that needs to take place. I've been doing that as mayor for the last 15 months. Thank you, Mayor. Representative Clements. Right now, we're experiencing unprecedented prosperity across our city. But too many families and communities are being left behind. I've held kitchen cabinet talks with families all across our entire community and sat down at their kitchen tables and talked about the main issues of concern to them. And the same three issues keep coming up. Public education, transportation, and affordable housing. Public education will be my top priority. I look forward to discussing each and every one of these issues with you tonight and sharing my vision for how we're going to move Nashville forward together. Dr. Swain. We're absolutely moving in the wrong direction. That's why I'm running for mayor. I've never wanted to serve in a political office. I was drafted because the people felt that they needed someone who had courage and integrity that would stand up for the right thing. Our public safety officers, uh, whether we're talking about police, firefighters, or dispa dispatchers, they have been neglected. They're short-staffed. We don't have enough affordable housing for people who work. And we have the traffic and transit problems and even more. So I'm running for mayor because Nashville needs an outsider who's not tied to the old boys network, who will do what's right for the people and not for corporations and for the wealthy who have benefited from the, the decisions made by the previous mayors, including the current one. All right, Councilman Cooper. Thank you, and, and I want to thank Belmont for inviting us here. Well, we will be on the right direction if we make the right changes. And the right changes begin with restoring trust in government with plans such as a transportation plan, an affordable housing plan that people believe are gonna make a difference in their lives and do make a difference in their lives. Now we need to invest in neighborhoods and we need to stop the past practices of kind of really only favoring one neighborhood over the rest. I'm sure we'll talk about that more later tonight. But it is true, I'm not for raising taxes. I 
consistently have not been raised for raising taxes because we do have surpluses in other pockets of government and we need to exhaust all of those resources and bring them back and pay for improvements in neighborhoods before we can make progress as a community going forward. Home prices in Nashville have skyrocketed in recent years, yet the city's property tax rate is at an historic low. Last week, the council tried to pass a property tax hike but fell one vote short. Would you support an increase in property taxes next year to fund schools and give Metro workers a raise? And we'll start with Dr. Swain. Absolutely not, because revenues are up 23% between 2015 and 2019. The revenues were, there was an estimated $440 million. We need to find out where the money is going, where the waste is. And so I don't believe we need to raise per, our property taxes we need to cut spending. We do not have a revenue problem in the city. We have a spending problem because we have leaders who can't say no. They make irresponsible decisions. They spend like drunken sailors. Councilman Cooper. Oh, thank you. Um, revenues are up $350 million in the last four years. That is a lot, right? We do need to go get management savings and there are other sources of revenue than just the property tax. The property tax is the easiest source of revenue to government, but there are sustained revenue increases that can be garnered back to the city. We made investments in the tourism, in the development. Now we need to bring some of that back for our vitally needed services that's currently being borne entirely by the general fund. Now, there are management savings, there are revenue savings, but consistently for four years, I have fought and worked to make this possible. On August 1st, along with the mayor's election, there's gonna be a referendum on the ballot requiring for really the first time accurate debt reporting and performance metrics by departments. Once we begin to evaluate the efficiency of departments, then we're gonna be able to make the changes that we need going forward. Thank you, Councilman. Mayor Briley. So I, I oppose the tax increase that the council considered on, uh, on Tuesday. Uh, that's because uh, to, to a great extent, it hurt Metro employees. It would have raised the property tax on every policeman and firefighter in Nashville and not given them one additional penny in increased salary. For most teachers, they would have gotten a 1% raise and had their property taxes increased. It was the wrong way to go about addressing compensation for our employees, which is critical to me. That's why I've asked the school board to come up with a, with a full-blown assessment of what teacher pay should be. I've asked the HR department to look at our compensation structure so that we can address the, the, the problems with police pay in particular. And I am committed in next year's budget to making sure we have the revenue necessary to fund both of those plans. Thank you. Representative Clemens. This past week, Nashville families lost to the status quo. The Briley Cooper budget deprived working families of a better quality of life. Now, I'm the only candidate on this stage who supported the Bertrand Mendez budget. And that's because real leadership is needed in Nashville a willingness to stand up and fight for what is right rather than what's politically convenient. Now, it's truly unfortunate that we found ourselves in a position where the most fiscally responsible option was a property tax rate increase. But that's a direct result of years of fiscal mismanagement and irresponsibility. As your mayor, I am fully committed to doing what is necessary to fully fund our public schools, address affordable housing, and build out a 21st century transportation infrastructure system. Thank you very much. Candidates, over the last 20 years or so, the city we know has focused on downtown development, many say at the expense of our neighborhoods. Do you think the economic incentives the city has used to lure businesses to town have gone too far? And we'll begin with you, Councilman Cooper. Well, <clears throat> incentives may have a place, but there's a moment when you need to wake up and realize that they're really not necessary. And corporations are good at taking advantage of an inefficient market. And the reality is Nashville went out of its way in chapter one, or fairly recently, to go all in and recreating a downtown. Now that day is over. 
And the taxes collected between tourism taxes, hotel taxes, and sales taxes that are collected by the Convention Center Authority have ballooned, have ballooned. The Music City Center will have a $60 million cash surplus. It's projected we'll have $190 million of unrestricted cash. Great, that is success. But we need to learn from that and adjust what we are doing. Now, as for incentives, we need to have them focused more on the parts of the city that use them for small business and to get companies here that employ our own people as workers. Mayor Briley. So I, I, I agree with, uh, with uh, Councilman Cooper to, to a great extent that we have to be prudent when we offer incentives. I presented two to the council. I think Councilman Cooper voted for both of them. But today I was in a position to announce a new relocation to Nashville. Almost 500 jobs coming from California. Um, uh, Pilot.com, it's a software company, it's a tech company, and we didn't offer any incentives for that. That's the kind of change we need in our city. We need to be focused on bringing good jobs to town. We need to know we're a great place to relocate. Now, there'll be moments where we decide, like Councilman Cooper and I decided with Amazon and Alliance Bernstein, that those made sense. But there'll be other opportunities where we don't have to. Now, when it comes to investing in our neighborhoods, one of the first things I did as mayor was to go over to Fort Negley and make sure that the development that was proposed there came to an end because we needed to protect that area for green space for this community. That's the kind of change we need in Nashville. That's the kind of mayor I've been for the first 15 months and that I will be for the next four if I'm reelected. Representative Clements. Nashville is a great city. It's time we start acting like one. We should be negotiating from a position of strength. We shouldn't be sitting down at the table to negotiate with million dollar corporations and pushing all our chips across the table and giving them whatever they want just to come to Nashville. These negotiations should be two ways. We should be demanding things from these companies that want to benefit from all the great things about our city. We should be getting investments in public education and affordable housing and infrastructure. They're gonna put additional burdens on our city and they need to invest and be good corporate citizens. Additionally, moving forward, we need to show our locally owned small businesses just as much love and provide them with these incentives that we've been showing corporations. Dr. Swain. Nashville needs a mayor who can be a tough negotiator. In the deals that have been cut by the previous mayors, they're pretty much giving away the store to lure companies here. They don't have to do that. As mayor, what I would do is sit down with those companies to make sure that they were showing us what they can do. And so it's not just about giving them everything to get them here. They have to become a part of our community, invest in our community, invest in our schools, invest in our workforce. We have just been given too much of the taxpayer incentives. I think we need to focus on our local businesses. We need to focus on the neighborhoods and it shouldn't be about the big corporations and the people coming from out of state. What about the people in state and the people that are already in the city that are part of what has made Nashville the great city that it is? Thank you. Along the same lines, Nashville is often called the It City. We've done a re remarkable job of catering to visitors, but many Nashvilleans say we haven't done enough for the people who actually live here. How would you as mayor make this an It City for residents as well? Representative Clemens. Well, I'm less concerned about keeping this being the it city. I'm more concerned about us becoming that city. That city that continues to neglect entire parts of our community. For too long, neighborhoods like Bordeaux and North Nashville, Whites Creek and Antioch and other parts of this city have not seen the types of investments that downtown has benefited from. The entire community is not benefiting from the boom during this time of unprecedented prosperity. The question I would like to ask those who are currently serving in Metro government is what's your explanation for completely ignoring these communities? Thank you, Dr. Swain. Well, it's certainly the case that not all of Nashville has prospered. We have bike lanes in certain communities where only 19% of the city actually has a sidewalk. And we know that the pedestrian deaths are more likely to occur when people are walking along the highway, walking along the road, to me that's unacceptable and we need to invest in the infrastructure of the whole city. 
And there is a disparity. And when I travel around, and I've spoken to lots of people, I mean, they, Donald, people in Donison, people in Bellevue, uh, Bordeaux, North Nashville, they do feel neglected because they're paying taxes and they're not getting the benefits. There's too much focus on downtown and certain neighborhoods where there are wealthy people. I think to have the kind of city that we need, we have to focus on everyone. As mayor, that's what I would do. I would, I would focus on the least advantaged among us. Thank you. Councilman Cooper. Well, we need to go from its city to great city. How do you do that is you take the money that's been created by the it city and you use it as a dividend to invest in neighborhoods out into the county. Now, this is the reason you run for mayor is actually to get that investment done. The mayor in Nashville controls the budget. Now, I know there's some reference to my influence on this budget. I think the mayor would agree. I have very little influence on this budget. Didn't vote for it. But I want to create one as mayor that for the first time in years reinvests back into our neighborhoods. People will come to Nashville for the city, but they will stay for the neighborhoods. And our quality of life is based on the neighborhoods. And that requires sidewalks, stormwater, green space, community centers, all of these things that people are crying out to have. That's how we'll have a Nashville for everyone. Mayor Bradley. I don't agree with you, uh, Councilman Cooper. Uh, uh, you've touted your experience as a Williamson County developer as being what's that's so special about you um, being our mayor. And um, we had four substitute budgets at the council on Tuesday. Um, your expertise surely would have given you the opportunity to present your own budget to the council and sent the city in a different direction. You elected not to do that leadership would have resulted in your taking a budget to the council on Tuesday. I don't know why you didn't, but you didn't. Now, when it comes to investing in our neighborhoods, what I announced yesterday was an 800-acre acquisition of new green space in District 1. That is an important part of preserving the quality of life in this community. It is important to the city, and I led by doing that. Now, I have heard from too many people that they can't get to their office downtown that a wheelchair can't get on the sidewalk. That's why I asked the council to ban scooters, because that's about putting citizens over tourists. Thank you, Member Lane. Candidates, last summer, a report found that you need to make $80,000 a year to live comfortably in Nashville, but our median household income is just under 50,000 a year. More and more people, including Metro teachers, firefighters, police officers, can no longer afford to live in the city in which they work. How will you try to fix that? Mayor Briley. So the, uh, I announced uh, just a few weeks ago uh, an unprecedented, nationally acclaimed plan to build more affordable housing in the city of Nashville. It's called Under One Roof 2029. I'd encourage you to go to underoneroof2029.com and check it out. It's going to build more than 10,000 new units here in our community. It's going to have units that are suitable for folks who are currently living in public housing. It's going to have workforce units, and it's going to have market rate units. Additionally, on top of that, um, I'm working to make sure that we increase folks' wages. I announced a program called Nashville Grad that's going to help our high school graduates get through Nashville State Community College more quickly because only about 10% are getting through in three years. We've got to raise wages, and we have to focus on housing. Um, that's the kind of change that I have been focused on as mayor. Day one, I started focusing on the change that was going to make Nashville a stronger place for everybody who lives here. Representative Clements. It's inexcusable that in Nashville, Tennessee, that two teachers living in the same household can't afford to live comfortably. Now we must address affordability holistically, focusing on all the key factors, increasing wages and recruiting better jobs, addressing poverty, addressing access to public transportation, and addressing the serious affordable housing crisis in our city. Now, I take great issue with the current mayor who stood downtown and said there is not an affordable housing crisis. Too many people across this entire city are being displaced, and I plan to address it in three ways. First, I want to create a dedicated revenue stream for the Barnes Fund for Affordable Housing, seeking to put at least $50 million in it per year by the next five years. Next create income source protections 
for those using Section 8 vouchers so they have free and equal access to rental units. And next, create a land bank so that we can put public property that is deemed surplus into the land bank in a transparent process with priority given to the development of affordable housing. Dr. Swain. My plan for housing is called blue collar housing because it focuses on the population that's earning $50,000 or less, which is probably the medium income for Nashville. And my vision is to work using the estimated 2,000 parcels of city owned land, making some of that land available to contractors and developers who would build homes on city owned land. And I'm told that that would get the cost of a house down to between 150,000 uh, to 200, between 200,000 and 150,000. And we can use new modular technology, the prefabs, and there are other creative ways that we can provide housing for people who work here so that people who work in this city can afford to live here. Councilman Cooper. Well, thank you. Well, I, I want to put my experience as a business person as a developer, as somebody that has worked in real estate with large projects to work for the city. Because you're gonna to have to have business judgment to make it work. These are large investments. Land use is always a complicated part of making any big project work. And we need a large implementation of affordable housing stock across the county. Now, in, the, in this current proposal, which was kind of a one-page press release that came out after a year, if you look at it closely, it's $350 million, all of our affordable housing money headed to MDHA, and 1,000 new additional units is supposed to be the yield. Well, that's $350,000 a unit. Is that the right return on investment that we're going to need if we're really going to address affordable housing? I think myself and every other affordable housing participant has the same concerns. Thank you. What do you think is the single biggest infrastructure challenge facing the city and how would you address it? Let's start with Dr. Swain. I think uh, sidewalks is one of the issues that only 19% of the city has sidewalks. I think that that is a serious concern. And um, there are some pipes that feed our schools that have lead in it that that hasn't been addressed. So um, there isn't just one problem, there are many problems uh, that have come about because the city is not focused on the right things. But sidewalks uh, should be a priority rather than bike lanes. Councilman Cooper? Well, a <clears throat> couple of big ones. Of course, sidewalks are important, but intersections. Most of our fatalities and serious injuries come from a small number of intersections. They were identified in 2014, the 50 worst. Now, the state is responsible for some of these, but really only three have been worked on in that period of time. You have to go ahead and fix intersections and have turning lanes as well as sidewalks. And then there's another aspect that people don't really appreciate, which is our water department is under court order. It's gonna need $120 million worth of investment every year just to stay in compliance with clean water. The greatness of a city is multiple large capital plans being administrated correctly and with full value for the taxpayer. Mayor Bradley? Well, transportation infrastructure is obviously clearly the most critical um, investment we need to be making as a community. Uh, and after Mayor Barry's uh, transit plan failed back a little bit more than a year ago, I got to work the very next day making strides uh, for the city when it comes to transportation and transit. We've been working with TDOT to get better control over our existing resources because frankly, most people are gonna be in a car for the foreseeable future. We have been working along the Dickerson Road Pike, Dick Dickerson Pike um, corridor to add um, transit there, connecting up to the 386 corridor, Vietnam Vets going all the way to Gallatin to add a second regional transit line. We've been working with WeGo to make sure that as they assess their routes in the coming years, uh, there is more frequency and duration on the su successful routes and better stops for everyone along the lines. Uh, now, finally, we can, without much city money, I believe, build a transit line from the airport to downtown with the help of the airport authority and the convention center authority. We got to get something built. Enough talk. Let's go build something. Thank you. Representative Clements. 
Traffic is the number one issue that I've heard the most about as I've traveled across the entire county. This is a quality of life issue. Every single minute we sit stuck in traffic, that's one less minute helping our children with their homework or doing the things that we love. Now, I plan to address this issue in two ways. First, by implementing short-term cost-effective solutions. We'll start by evaluating lane shifts on major corridors coming in and out of downtown during rush hour. We'll look at improving our busing system and public transportation system, and then work to finally implement synchronized timelines. Now, over the long term, we need to build out a 21st century transportation infrastructure system. I'm the only candidate standing on this stage who's committed to a transit referendum in my first term in office. We cannot afford to wait any longer. This will require regional cooperation because it's a regional issue, and those in the surrounding counties will need to pay their fair share. Thank you. I One. hope we have a traffic and transit question because uh, I have an answer for that. All right. 